welcome to the Chevy Nova 7374 Nova Show. Look what's back. Look what's in one piece. And it's uh, it's been a long time, folks. Uh, I won't lie. It's It's been a difficult spring, but hey, the... Uh, of course the phone's got to ring. The, the people got to wait till uh, I'm live. All right. But hey, my focus is on you guys. Uh been a long time well we'll give it a, a few more moments here we'll uh we'll give it a few minutes oh apparently i can share to group pages oh well you know what let's click let's click that oh that's uh that's okay that's the safe well i don't want to do that but okay let's get back here let's go back let's get back folks like I was saying, welcome to the Chevy Nova 73, 74 Nova Show, where we spend an hour talking about Novas, iBlab, you chat, and we go from there. Besides the Nova, look what's back in the garage. We got rid of the Ford. We brought in the other X-Body. The Omega's back. Welcome back, Slow Omega, and back on the road. Uh, the Nova's a little further ahead than normal, so I can't. Uh, and of course, uh, given my uh, accelerator brake mechanism breakage thing, I can't really move it back. And for that matter, I don't even really know where the, the keys are for it. But welcome all. I'm not too sure if there's uh, anybody watching just yet. It's, uh, it's not giving me a video counter. It says I got two viewers, no comments. So let's see, is this thing working? Let me just go over here to the other monitor, to the other page. And we're going to wait for a few people to log in. Uh, we're doing it on a kind of an odd Monday night here. Okay, so it does show up on the web page here. And uh, yeah, it says we're live. 22 seconds. Oh, okay. Now this is... Well, whatever. Okay, somebody hit like. That's awesome. If you like it, say hi. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just wait a few minutes. Ah, oh, here we go. Jason Nolan, my Canadian brother. Jason's got a beautiful, I believe it's a 75, if my memory serves me correctly. Now, given this is the 73, 74 Nova show, we do have some enthusiasts, uh, that have other years, but uh, Jason's got a lot of uh, beautiful pictures of his Nova from Eastern Canada. So Jason, thanks for joining us. Orlando, good day, sir. Uh, might be a little slow on your comments because I see I got to do translation here. Our Spanish-speaking friend, hola. Uh, I won't lie, I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> but I, I will certainly try to to uh, make sure I get the comments translated, and uh, thank you for joining us. I believe you're a first-timer to our stream. Mostly what happens here, I chit-chat, we just talk about Nova things that come up in the chat. I kind of facilitate, if uh, that's a pretty big word. And uh, we see where the, the chat goes. So he's from South America, uh, Ecuador. Oh wow, you're fairly south. So we've got uh, we've got uh, Canada covered and uh, South America covered. Uh, now we just need some people from the U.S. to join us, <laughs> and that's probably what we got here. Here we go. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? Welcome and thanks for joining us. Uh, this is something I haven't done in uh, a long, long time. When we first started doing these streams uh, two, three years ago, the idea was to do them every two weeks. Found out very quickly we ran out of material to cover in that. Two weeks became a month, and then uh, I play a lot of ball hockey. You can't see it now because I put on almost all that weight I've lost. And my ball hockey kind of cut into the car scene. And the streams became farther and fewer apart. And honestly, just uh, I didn't know if people were really wanting them, but given the feedback I always get, uh, I feel guilty that I don't do enough of them. 
So let's uh, let's just take a look here. It looks like we got a few viewers showing up. Oh, we got Kansas in the house. How you doing, Wisconsin? Ryan, welcome, sir. Like I mentioned, this is the Chevy Nova 7374 Nova show. And as always, when we start the show, I'd like to take a moment to thank uh, William Sergeant William Hamlet, who is the founder of this great group. I also want to send a shout out to Craig Iben, Jeff Van Camp. Rex Koflak and Kim Nova Girl Whiteacre. Uh, these are all the other admins that uh, look after our forum. And you obviously know from when you tried to sign up onto the forum, it was quite a process. We wanted a picture. That's because this group is really locked down to more or less the owners of vehicles. We're not really an enthusiast site. We, we're more for the, the builders, the owners as a resource. So this site, as you know from getting in here, was difficult. Lou, my buddy, how you doing? He's joining us too. He's got a beautiful red Nova. I believe it's a 74. So, all right, we've uh, done... Uh, I always like to acknowledge the admins because uh, especially uh, Craig, Rex, and Kim, those three um, really run the, run the show. Uh, they do all the uh, approvals for both our site and... And our uh, sister site, which we are kind of separating from. I should mention that the 7374 GMX body, the Nova Omega Ventura Apollo site, which has been our sister site since its day one creation. That's where we moved the corporate cousins over because we were locked down to just Chevy Nova production. That just because we're so busy... We have our lives too, and we can't properly maintain both groups. But we're still admins of both groups. But some of the other admins have taken back uh, a little more uh, of a lax approach to it. And really, I got to step up my game and start doing more because I haven't been pulling my weight, more or less because I'm heavy and I can't pull as much. But anyways, getting back to here. Hey, Matt, how you doing, buddy? So, uh, as you see, though, we do have the 73 Chevy Nova. This has been my baby. I've been driving it since 1995. I've been modifying it since the year 2000. We also have in the other corner, Slow Mega, the 1974 Oldsmobile Omega. Originally, I bought that car in 2005 as a parts car for the Nova because I wanted the doors off of it. And... Then we started going through the car, making a list of what parts to keep. And we thought to ourselves, you know, it, it actually isn't that bad. Maybe we should salvage it and save it, put it on the road. Because there's not that many Omegas out there. And now I've ended up with two half-finished cars. And here we go in uh, the Nova. If uh, most of you, you folks know that back in September, I blew up the 406. I had a little whoopsie. Had a little uh, lesson on detonation. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a little show and tell again. I'm actually going to mount these back on the rods and uh, hang them on my roof as ornaments. Uh, this, this is what my pistons should have looked like. These are domed pistons, which gave me a 12.6 to 1 compression. And yeah. That was probably about a $4,000 lesson on detonation, not proper race fuel or proper octane. As you can see, uh, yeah, it did a lot of damage. It uh, pitted the heads pretty good. Uh, when it popped, it also messed up the timing chain pretty good. I, I was lucky. I was about eight teeth away from losing the whole motor on that timing chain. And Dan Clem, who is a, a very, very good friend of mine and an engine builder, he, he should be up there uh, with those big, famous engine builders. But he's a local guy. He's done all my motors, the motor in the Omega, the motor in the Nova. He's done the machining on my first, very first 406, as well as my backup motor for the Omega. So Dan Clem, I love this guy. I won't do anything without him. He was able to fix my heads, shave them down, fix all the pitting and damage, bent valve, yada, yada, yada. But uh, 
you know, when, when you're not in a good frame of mind, things are happening in life. Uh, there's something I, I've jokingly always said, and I, I joke with uh, my girlfriend Shelly over this, called retail therapy. And most of you folks know, uh, I did a disc brake conversion on here. That was a Black Friday sale kit that I bought. More because I was sitting here one night. I don't remember what I was doing in the garage. And I was looking down in the garage and I saw my, my little kid's bike. And that bike had disc brakes on the front and back. And I thought, why am I driving around in a car with who knows how many horse? Four drum brakes, manual drum brakes. And my kid's bike has disc brakes. So not that I was in a good frame of mind. I went out and bought disc brakes. <laughs> so you guys obviously, you saw all the posts, all the updates on that. And uh, yeah, they, they were working good for the, uh, the two weeks that I, I was able to drive. As you can see uh, right now, the good Lord has sidelined me. Um, the Nova and I haven't been getting along as most of you know. And... But the motor's rebuilt, and I haven't really told anybody, but you know what? Here's one of the advantages of being on the Chevy Nova 73-74 Nova show. And I'll get to your comments in just a, a second, folks. Uh, the 406, I haven't talked much about the rebuild that we did on this, on this car. And um, the reason for that is we've got a couple members on our group that are also part uh, that live in Winnipeg. And I've kept it hush, but... What we built here, uh, because I needed new pistons, turned out I needed a couple of rods, because a couple of rods were damaged. So, hey, why not buy a crank while you're at it? I ended up buying some Brodex uh, Track 1 Series heads. What we have here is a 421 small block Chevy Stroker. So there you go, the cat's out of the bag. I was in the midst of tuning it, and I just, you know, we, we had some problems with oil leaks, which we have more or less solved. Unfortunately, this winter I'll have to pull it out to fix the pan leak. But I was just, you know, I have the tune in the sniper all set up now. The car's running good. It's properly tuned. I was just about to take off the street tires to put on the drag radials, because if you give it any more than 30% throttle, the car is looking due west. So I obviously need stickier tires. We also had the transmission rebuilt, but this is a 421 stroker small block Chevy that I'm hoping will smash that 12 2 time limit I have and uh, maybe forced to get some license plates. So the cat's out of the bag. Maybe now I'll post a little bit more about it and, and post some pictures, but that's why I've been pretty quiet about things. I, I was being sneaky, so sorry. Hey. All right, let's get to some of the, the chat here. There's a lot of people. Oh, wow. Okay. So we did a location check there. Lou, Ryan. Yeah. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, Jason was just letting us know he's from Garnish, Newfoundland, Canada. Way out east of us. Because north is that way. And Lou, how you doing? So I guessed right. He did have a 74. Matt, how you doing, sir? And my buddy from California, Ray Ray Williams, with that beautiful purple-ish, purple-blue-ish 73 Nova with those really sexy big wheels. Um, thanks for the comment, Jason. Uh, it, it looks like a nice Nova because this fender was replaced in an accident in, in 97, but really the car's got a lot of patina. It's got its rust. I mean, it was driven in our Winnipeg winters up into 96, 97. So it's got its rust in the quarters, the wheel wells, and the paint. The paint's done, but I mean, if you take a picture at the right angle and at the right light, I mean, the car looks mint. But eh, I'm kind of going for that patina look. But when you drive it uh, at night when it's dark out, nobody sees the the, the patina. So, But thank you for, for the comment. And the party man has arrived. How you doing, Timmy? Uh, remind me not to let you drive anything of mine. You like to break stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like I like to learn my lessons painfully and painfully expensive, especially uh, with the exchange and the Canadian dollar, and then getting taxed on top of it. I'm not even going to tell you how much is under that hood right now. I probably could have bought a nice used truck. 
okay, not nice, a Ford. I would have ended up buying a Ford truck. I can pick on Ford trucks because I own one. <laughs> so, yeah, no, uh, Jason, as I just told you, it is a 421 small block Chevy Stroker. Uh, the car was originally a 352 barrel with a turbo 350, 273 gears. Um, that's what it originally came as uh, from the factory with uh, the 14 inch, 14 by 6 uh, E78 14 wheels. Uh, my dad bought this car new. And then I went to my grandpa, and then uh, my grandpa started letting me drive it in uh, June of 95. And then in 98, uh, grandpa in his late 80s wasn't the safest driver. And uh, just uh, after a weekend, my dad uh, made a comment to me saying, uh, when, you, when you're done with grandpa's car this weekend, um, just keep it here, referring to my parents' place. And uh, the Nova's been mine ever since. Uh, I'm really curious to how Grappa would think of the car today. And that's another reason why, too, I haven't done any more body work or fixed it or that. Because this is how my Grappa... Oh, I'm going to get choked up here. My Grappa was a great man. I love him. This is how my Grappa last saw the car. And that's kind of how I want to keep it. So, All right, now before I cry. Oh, Lou, man. I did more than bust my knuckles on these brakes. In fact, I'm just now starting to do the video processing of that. I think I've got six, 10 to 15 minute episodes of me busting up the front end. It's actually pretty comical on the right side. Uh, I'll, I'll let you in a little uh, secret. When you're doing a, a brake conversion and step four says remove the front shocks, don't. Um, and then when you go to put the car back together, well, how do you get things together, right? You use the weight of the front end, and usually that brings the control arms together, and you screw the spindle on. Well, there was no motor in the car. Where was all the weight? So it, it took me to sit on the fender with my buddy Bruce with a pry bar, and my mom walked in at just the perfect time. I was like, Mom, here's the castle nut. Can you screw this on the ball drain? And my mom got in there like a trooper. And save the day. So that will be on the video. Also on video. Oh, oh. And I posted about this. I posted about this where, you know, I, I bought a bag of rags at a, a store some five years ago. And I posted that I've been using these rags for cleaning stuff. And I found another one in my bag of rags at the bottom with a name tag on it. And it turned out that these... Where my grandma's PJs, I guess after she passed away, we just donated the clothes back to the place where she was being cared for. And I guess they just uh, put them in one of those, uh, you know, clothes bins for donations. And they got turned into rags. So my grandma is here with me, obviously. And she was helping with the car. So needless to say, I've washed the rags so as much of them as I can. And I'm going to put a rag in each car. For my grandma, but it was really spooky seeing that name tag. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, hey, well, uh, Ray Ray, yeah, that's right. Uh, 421 Stroker. Um, my buddy Dan, again, the engine builder, thinks I'm going to do well into the 11s. I can't break 11.5 because if you break 11.5, you need to cage your car. I absolutely will not cage my Nova. I'm not going to cut it and start going through the floor to cage it. Whatever it runs with the tune it has now, with the setup it has now, is what it's going to run. We're not doing any more tweaking. We're just going to run it the way it is. Uh, I, like I said, I spent a lot of money on this motor, and I can't afford to do it again. If this motor blows... It's probably going to be game over, and the very first 406 that I had that ran 13s will end up going into this car. So I ended up having to get a second job over the winter time, which which helped pay for the upgrades. But uh, oh, I I can't wait to run it again. Obviously, you know, like I said, with uh, uh, and and this injury, as you guys have seen me post about, it, I uh, I tore my uh, Achilles tendon at the end of May, so. I can't drive. I actually sat in the Omega the other day, and between the tunnel for the transmission and the brake pedal, I can't even touch the gas pedal. So I can't even drive it, even if I tried. Hey, John, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. 
And Timothy finally got the frame rail strained from the wreck a year ago. Uh, if I remember correctly, Tim, that car was parked on the front street. Tim, uh, for you folks who are newer to our uh, amazing group, I believe the car was parked on the front street and somebody uh, rear-ended it. it was, or were you rear-ended while you're driving? I, I, sorry, I don't completely remember, but it was hit pretty hard in the rear as Tim was fixing it up. And I guess now he's finally been able to get around and all the insurance is all sorted through. And he's now getting the car back on the streets. That's great to hear, Tim. Please send us pictures. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Yes, they all look good as long as you drive them. And you know what, Chris? That's one thing I really do enjoy about my car. Um, I, I, I drive it like it's stolen. I beat the crap out of my car, and I have fun, which, you know, I just finished telling you guys. This is build number five, transmission number nine. And it's not that I've blown up nine transmissions. I think... In total, this will be like the fifth transmission. But every time I have the motor, I get I go through the transmission, and I just count that as another transmission. I don't know if you, if if that's right or not, but that's how I do it. So motor number five, transmission number nine, rear end number two. So over 26 years, that's a lot of money. But I don't smoke, I don't drink, I eat a lot of pizza, as you can tell. Can't take it with you, right? Hey, John, yeah, how's the leg? You know what? The leg's been good. It's it's healing well. Um, I was at the doctor's last weekend. I go again this uh, coming weekend to get another heel uh, lift taken out. So what? when you, your Achilles pops, you got to have your foot at this weird angle like this. And in the cast, they had heel lifts to keep your foot pivoted. And they took one out. And then last weekend, they say, throw away the crutches and start walking. Yes, sir. And in fact, I had been doing that for already about three days, lightly around the house, just to kind of gauge my progress. And then I went to Walmart, spent $50 on these work shoes because they're a lot thicker sole. And, oh, yeah, you can't stop me now. And now that I'm back at work, if I'm good to work, I'm good to be in the garage. And here I am. So we're on the, the road to recovery. Uh, still three to five weeks in, in the cast. As far as I know, and then there'll be physio, of course, after. I have tried walking without cast. It's a little funny. My foot still feels funny, but we're not going to push it. <coughs> we just put the boot back on, and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, obviously, this happened for a reason. The good Lord has a plan for me. I, I don't mean to preach. Um, everything happens for a reason. We'll just leave it at that. So, yeah. And Chris, oh, awesome story about the family buying a new, yeah, yeah. Uh, the sad part of that story, Chris, there is a sad side to that story, is the 70 SS 350 four-speed, uh, 350 horse Nova that my dad sold when he bought this one. And that's where the dog dish hubcaps you see in the pictures that I have of this Nova came from. We're off my dad's original 70 SS. And Keith, hey, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing well. Thank you. I hope you're doing well as well. I hope your car is in one piece and running great. Always enjoy seeing pictures of it. Um, Keith, if I remember, and I really do try hard to remember your guys' cars because you guys have gotten me through a real tough time in my life in this past year. Uh, I've had trouble, you know, you know, everybody's had trouble with, you know, the COVID and all this. And then I had some relationship issues. I, I had some some issues of my own I had to take care of, but with cars, your guys' pictures really helped me, especially in the winter time, because I went through a bit of a relationship breakup with Shelly, and I had a hard time dealing with it, especially because there's so many memories of both these cars with Shelly, and your guys' cars really helped me get through, so I really appreciate you guys, and I really try to remember your cars, and Keith, if I remember correctly, it is a red 74 SS with the beautiful SS stripe package, I believe, your stickers. And those Krager SSs. Man, do I love Krager rims. And originally, that's what I was looking for, for the Omega, when I came across that second set of Keystones, which are now on the Nova. And the Keystones that were on the Nova are now on the Omega, mostly because the front ones are 14-inch, and you can't, you're not supposed to run 14-inch with the disc brake conversion, but... It will work in an emergency. It does clear. But I think if you had weights on the inside, it would shave those weights off. 
So, oh, yep. Tim just confirms. Yeah, he. I'm right. He was asleep when his car got hit. And here is the man, the myth, the legend, our founder, Sergeant William Hamlet, sir. Good day. Uh, you and I, we need to talk again. We don't talk much right now. Will's got a lot going on, as have I. And we were doing Zoom meetings where we were doing videos of members' cars where they were talking about their cars. And, you know, we just, we just kind of ran out of time over Christmas. We never got back into it. We really need to get back into that and start featuring some of our cars. So, okay, so Chris, uh, awesome, I'm getting, and then he kind of cut out there, so hopefully, Chris, uh, you're still with us and can get back to us on what you're getting. And, oh, cool, yeah, yeah thanks, Jason. Yeah, it's, uh, the car's got a lot of history. When people say everything's got a price, well, this is the one car that does not have a price. And, yeah. Oh, okay, we got our first question right on. How hard is it to install electric fans to keep the cars cooler in the summer heat? Uh, depends what kind of fan you get, Keith. Um, people can get, you know, you can get the, the type of fans that just go right onto the rad. You can buy pusher fans that, you know, you just with those clips. You can get pushers, pullers. I'm running a Flexolite uh, 188. And what that is, an electric fan, I believe it's 3300 CFM. And it actually comes with a shroud with weather stripping. And it fits beautifully. You have, I had the custom make brackets, though, that I have screwed underneath the plate here. If you want, uh, just send me a, a post or, or a message, and I can send you uh, pictures. I had to make two custom brackets here that bolt it to the radiator cradle. And it fits tight and snug against the rag because there's weather stripping along it and then along the bottom i didn't make brackets for it to bolt it to the bottom of the radiator um of the radiator cradle uh i used my uh, good friend tie wraps so i got two tie wraps holding it at the bottom flush against the rad and i tell you that keeps this thing even in this it's been close to the hundreds here it keeps this thing is still running 195 Rarely does it get to 200 unless I'm on the highway. In the Omega there, I'm still running the mechanical, although I did buy another Flexolite for it. And oh yeah, 180 thermostats in both cars. With a shroud out of a 75 to 79, I don't know how, if you can see it. Uh, okay, yeah, right there. Um, uh, from 75 to 79, so it's a little wider with a flex fan in there, six blade flex fan. And yesterday in 100 degree heat, it was running at 200. So I imagine if I had an electric fan in there, that'd probably bring it down to 190, 195. But, um, and, and to wire it up, I like to get fancy with my wiring. I, get, I don't know if you guys have seen, you know how I've done it with my headlights, with relays. But I have power coming from the battery here with a couple of fuses. That runs along the top here, and I'd really like to clean that up. I mean, my OCD twitches when I see the wiring here, which goes to a distribution panel here. The distribution panel here goes to my relays, which I got installed here, which really I want to move them. And there's a relay, of course, for the uh, electric fans, for the musical, the cucaracha horn, and then I got the relay set up for the headlights. Because I pull power off my battery for the headlights to get a brighter light, but also to work the LEDs so the LEDs turn off when the low beam lights come on. But the I the electric fan I also I have uh, I have it hooked up just to ignition to run it all the time. I don't have it on a timer or a uh, temperature sensor. I just as soon as you turn the car on, it, it's it's running. And uh, how hot is your car running, Keith? That uh, that you're concerned yeah are you thinking of going electric just cuz or because cooling's a problem or just curious i'm not trying to to steer you one way or another oh tim asks when do you bring it back weekly zooms well you know the, those zooms the video editing takes quite a bit of time i, I winter time of course i will have a lot more time because summertime i like to focus on my cars and do car things but Right now, you know, I'm not doing too much driving. <coughs> but thankfully, with, with Shelly and I working things out, and she's back in the picture, uh, we got the Omega going. We changed the fuel line. So we were out cruising this past week, and I haven't done much cruising at all since my 
foot injury, I've actually only been out four times. And usually I do that in one week. Now I've done that over a month's time. So I, depending on Shelly's free time, determines whether or not I go cruising because I still can't drive. But I, I would like to bring those Zooms back. Uh, I don't know about weekly, but, you know, at least something monthly or maybe bi-weekly again. Dan Platt, how you doing, sir? Good, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Adam McAllister with that beautiful 73, my team green buddy, my lieutenant and commander with those beautiful chrome wheels. He also has a set of dog dish hubcaps that he runs on some steelies. And John asks, would 65 Corvette heads, double head humps be like 202 heads? Uh, hard, hard to say. It depends on uh, the, ca the casting of them. Were they? Because you could drill a, a 194. You can machine the, the heads to accept bigger valves. But the first thing I would do is I would take that code, flip the head over, and I'd take the code you see on there. And do a search on that code, and that will give you what the specs are, the head are, or what they were originally, and start from there. NastyZ28.com has an excellent forum for decoding uh, engine blocks and uh, small block Chevy heads. And I believe, I believe they even touched the, uh, the big block Chevy. So, John, I would start there. Um, start with the decoding and see what you got for on those heads. And that's all we got for chat right now. I'm not too sure. Uh, I, again, you know, I haven't been on for long. I, I did try to post this a, a little earlier, so it wasn't a surprise. You know, hey, I'll be on an hour before I start posting. But I think I'm going to aim again. Maybe we'll we'll aim again for for next Monday if there's interest. And maybe uh, Keith, depending how soon you want to get your electric fan set up, uh, maybe I might be able to even. Uh, get you some pictures or I can, you know, disassemble uh, a little bit of it to show you how I've gone about installing it in my Nova. Because it's not like I'm taking the car out tomorrow. Hey, Craig, how you doing, sir? Another member of Team Green. Woo! Shoving it to those blue Novas, which I believe are behind my attack. Oh, you know, man, I love those color wars. Those are so much fun. <clears throat> I actually have people private message me asking me are we being serious or how you could you know be so mean to like it what's what it's just a blue nova why why are you acting like that and folks our color wars are are nothing but fun really we just love 73 74 novas we don't care what color they are it's uh, i don't even remember how it started but yeah we are not serious so <clears throat> depending on the color of your nova we're not trying to get you into a gang war. We're just trying to include you in uh, the fun we have. And it seems to be mostly between uh, green and blue for the most part. And then uh, Dan Kroll from uh, Alaska likes to get in there with his flat black Novas. And uh, I like to take part in, uh, I guess you could call me a double agent because uh, the Omega's flat black. <laughs> so I got both angles uh, covered. <clears throat> Loose. Oh, and uh, Dan was just asking how the foot's doing. Uh, it's not bad. It's it's healing well. Um, still probably three to five weeks in a cast. But uh, it, it's coming along nice. I was talking about it earlier in more detail. But <clears throat> I did try to sit in the car. And between the transmission hump and the brake pedal, I can't touch the gas. So, yeah, there's not even an attempt, an attempt to try and drive yet. All right, and then Dad's asking where Team Gold is. You know what? I mean, I, I really should have written this down because last winter and spring, the the color wars were going pretty good, and we even had some allies going back and forth. And um, actually, I, I think I blamed Team Blue for the the sabotage that led to me blowing up my motor because they felt so threatened by Team Green. Uh, one thing I was actually hoping to do this year is I wanted to do virtual drag racing with our members where anyone who's racing or, you know, wants to have fun, run a time slip, post it up, and uh, let's do some virtual drag racing. But uh, we're not even open up here yet uh, with the restrictions. They just lifted the restrictions here in Manitoba last week because we've had so many waves come through here now. 
and our track probably won't be open till August long, if not to the end of August. Uh, I won't be racing anytime soon, although the Omega is now ready if my dad wanted to race, but our first race date would definitely be the third week of August, and I won't be around. I'll be going to Saskatchewan, near Regina, Saskatchewan, to the SIR track with a group of my friends from the, the Mob Race, and I don't know if you've ever seen me wear those shirts on previous podcasts or streams. Um, it stands for uh, Modified or Boosted Brotherhood. So a bunch of them are going out there to, to race, and I'm going to go because obviously I don't think I'll be driving yet. I'm going to go have some fun. So I, I don't, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to run the Nova. It's still, we're still, uh, we're still, we're still toying with it. Still breaking it in. <clears throat> All right. And uh, yeah, Craig, you know, I kind of miss these chats. At the same time, I'm not too sure how many people enjoy them either, but I always get great feedback. So I, I really got to, you know, quit being so self-conscious and just do it. Just do it. And Lou says, forget the double humps. Get yourself a set of Vortec heads. Vortec heads are nice. And that's what actually I'm running on the Omega. Uh, they were machined. Uh, Dan, he machined them, did a little extra machining on them. So they could get a little extra lift on them. Because I believe the cam I'm running in the Omega is a 480 lift. Let me double check that. You know, and I suck as a, as a car owner here. I don't even remember the specs of my cars anymore. And I still haven't gotten the specs for the Nova because, well, needless to say, when uh, my foot injury came about, the uh, last thing I wanted to think of was cars. So the Omega, we're running an Extreme Energy 274 hydraulic roll, uh, hydraulic cam, not a roller, just hydraulic. Uh, 230, 236, 490, 490 lift. And that's on Vortec heads. And that car, um, in 2019 in May, I made a couple passes in it with 373 gears and a 26-inch tire. I ran a 1331 and a 1339, and I didn't have the cutouts open. And I found in the past, with cutouts, I'll gain upwards of a half a second. I'm wondering, had that day been a good day? And maybe I'm, I might have touched a 12, in which case, what do I do for license plates? But yeah, Vortec heads, they make, a, they make a lot of power. And I also heard with Vortec heads, they don't like a lot of timing. They like a little, a little less time between 30 to 32. So I started testing that theory. And I think right now, again, with both cars, I can't remember all the settings, so... With a, a marker, I actually write down on the upper radiator cradle here. So right now I got it jetted at 6571 with a 6.5 power valve. I'm running a TR55 with a 0.28 gap, mid-grade gas, and the timing is set at 34 degrees. So I'm running 34 degrees in that car right now. And yeah, see I haven't really I haven't ridden on this one yet. Um I actually did write on here, but I guess I've washed it off. But I'll, I'll start doing that again. But I, I gotta, I gotta write down all the goodies of this. Now that I've let the cat out of the bag, I guess I might as well update my website and, and start uh, talking about it. Because uh, I know when people post about their motor stuff and that, and I always put, well, my 406 or my build, because I haven't told people, you know, 406. But yeah, yeah, 421 coming for you, Team Blue. All right, where's Team Gold? Dan, you are Team Gold. <clears throat> Craig, uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. I totally think it was the blue team that totally started the war uh, with the green team, and I believe you felt that I was being picked on, and that's how uh, you came to my rescue to help out. And, yes, Jason, uh, on the Nova, I am running 15 by 6 15 by 7 uh, Keystone Classics. The offset on the front are 3.063, if I remember correctly, and 3.7, I think, on the back. And I wish I could get a better offset to, to bring that in a little in on the back. Uh, 215, 70, 15 on the front, 265, 50 series on the back on the Nova. The Omega, we're running a 
205 75 14 on a 14 by 6 and a 245 60 15 on a 15 by 7 on the back and my steel rims uh, I have both steel rims that are 15 by 6 15 by 7s I also have some 14 by 6 and I even have a couple 14 by 7s but I, I've kind of gone with the the mags but with the Nova I'm probably going to go back to the steel rims being with Unilog mags. I I don't know. You know, I started thinking about it. I don't know how safe they are running them at the track. Especially if I'm going to start running 11s. So I may go back to the steel rims and hubcaps on the Nova. I definitely am going to have to go with a, a better tire on the front. Because these ones are, I forget what speed rating they are. But they're only good to like... I think a, a hundred and nine miles an hour, a hundred and twelve miles an hour. I think it's an S-rated uh, tire. So, with this upgrade of the motor, yeah, now I gotta upgrade the tires too. Like, where does the spending stop? Oh yeah, it stopped in June when I hurt my foot. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you gotta laugh with it, right? Ah. Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, yeah, I'll get well. You know, I'll, I'll get back to it soon. Uh, appreciate your well wishes and thoughts. As uh, all the, the comments I got on, on the website, I, I really do appreciate the, the well wishes and the thoughts. Everything happens for a reason. I mean, <clears throat> now I got my motor paid off for, and um, this is one story I never told about the motor. After I blew up the motor and I priced out what it would cost to fix, and then I added, you know, the, the heads, because I brought the compression down. I'm now running a, a 10.0 10 10 to, 10 to 1 compression uh, piston, bringing it down from 12.6. So it's going to be a lot more manageable for fuel-wise. Um, oh, where was I going with that? I totally just blanked. Wow, and I don't get do-overs here. I forget where I was going with that. Let me read here. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, I totally forget where I was going with that. Ah, side effect of my ADD meds. All right, next. Not many gold Novas out there. I think actually, uh, Dan, I think our friend Timothy's uh, Nova is gold. So he may be uh, he may be lurking in the background and having, getting your back covered there. All right, Keith has now replied to us. At this time, Dave, it's been running 190 pretty steady. Just worry when it comes to in line for cruise nights or sitting there not moving that an electric fan would be better. And actually, that's exactly why I went electric, Keith, in the Nova. It was one time I was going out to a, a, a cruise night just outside the city, and there was like 10 miles of construction. And this thing was like, and I know 205, 210 isn't high, but to me, I don't like that. That is, <clears throat> that is too hot. And, you know, you have to keep the air coming through and that. So when I put the electric fan on, it kept it, boom, 190, 195. It didn't matter if I was in standstill, rush hour traffic or what. It, it was night and day. But I, I will say, depending if you're with the electric fan, what other electric gadgets you have in your car, if you're going to go electric fuel pump or if you're, if you're going to go fuel injection, you may also want to consider upgrading the alternator, the amperage in the alternator. I found with the, the Holly Sniper, my electric fan, and the, of course the electric fuel pump with my radio on, the heater on, because you know it gets cool here in September, the headlights on, and basically everything turned on. When I was sitting at a light, you could see the, the alternator coming right down to about 12, and then the signal light would start flashing slowly, because obviously you know you're, you're sucking power. <clears throat> and I, what I also noticed is when I get low, the Holly Sniper stops doing timing control and stops transitioning timing. So I upgraded to a 100 amp alternator, which I can get you the part number of, uh, PowerMaster 8002. And since I put a, a 100 amp in there, mwah, let's turn everything on. So something to consider, Keith, if uh, you're thinking of going with an electric fan. And Lou's asking, what is my best time in the Omega? Well, Lou, you know what? I happen to write all this stuff down more as a log for my dad on the website. But the best times, the top three best ETs for Slomega in 2003. So the motor would have been just about two years old there. 
I hold the record with uh, a 196 60 footer. I know some of you guys are probably laughing at that. We ran a 1320 at 103 miles an hour. My dad holds the second and third fastest ones at 1325 and 1326 at 103.20 uh, miles per hour and 103.64 miles an hour. So we actually, we both have the same mile an hour on, on our one pass, but I ran a 1320, he ran a 1326. And back then that would have been with open headers. Um, since then, um, my fastest times, and this probably was with the, the cutouts open. I guess it depends on the temperature of the day, too. In 2019 was 1334, 1337 at 102.5 and 102.2. But a couple weeks before that, I ran, oh, where are you? A 1331, oh, I'm sorry, and a 1337 at 102.76 miles per hour. I also dynoed the Omega in 2016. At the rear wheels was 297. Um, was it 297? Oh, man, I forget. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Man, you, you caught me off guard here. You, yeah, yeah this, yeah, this looks bad. Uh, let's see if I wrote it down. <laughs> yes, okay. At the rear wheels, 274 rear wheel horsepower, 297.82 rear wheel torque and i actually have that video on the ozomega.ca youtube channel and that was dynoed uh, not with the with the headers closed uh, in full street trim uh patrick newman with the black beauty 74 nova i believe you're now running craigers on that car as well it's amazing the guys that are upgrading to Krager mags Gorgeous. The slots were sexy though too, Pat. So you know that uh, there's there's a guy who can change the look up on his car just by the set of wheels. But what a beautiful black Nova, all blacked out if I remember correctly, with the blue headlights. That is a sexy ride, sir. So Dan wants to be the only one with the gold Nova. So we'll let Tim know that it's a kind of a, a yellowy brown shade there. Uh, Dan and you can claim the gold Nova Club and you have 14s all around on your car like I mentioned earlier uh, mine came with yeah 14s I believe they were 14 by 6 steelies with uh, the moon caps on uh, E78 or was it F78 14 wheels but you know we, we've since kind of done away with those old bias plies and Jason, uh, I was born with cerebral palsy and I'm in a wheelchair. I cannot walk or talk, but I don't let that stop me. <clears throat> and you know what, Jason? Good on you, man. I love seeing those pictures with you. And I see you're, you're very active in the, uh, in the car scene with your car. And it's nice that you have somebody that's able to, to share that hobby with you and to get you out and about and that. So, yeah, keep doing what you love. Keep posting those pictures. On, uh, unfortunately, we, we can't allow them on our group because we're 73, 74 only. But, you know, I, I see you on a lot of the other uh, Nova sites, including the Canadian o Nova owners, which I believe you started that one. I love seeing your pictures, man. And the east coast of Canada is beautiful. And Dan says it's not safe. Okay, what's not safe? Um, probably, uh, probably referring to the bias plies or... Um, Please, uh, Dan, sorry, my ADD is kicked in. Are you referring to when I was talking about the speed rating of my tire? Oh, you're talking about my Unilug tires. Yes, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I really think I got to I gotta change that. And Dan says, I don't like being in my car over 200. Just bugs me. Um, you're, you're obviously talking kilometers because I can't see that being miles. Um if we're if we're going to talk about speed uh you know when i was younger we all, we all do stupid stuff when we're younger because we're we're immortal right and i'm not proud about this but uh yeah we've buried the needle in the nova past 120 and ran it up to the uh 5500 in third gear Whew. you did some stupid stuff man 
But you know what? At the track, I've got no problem going at a high speed in a controlled environment. But there's always that chance of breakage. There's always that chance something can happen. It, yeah. And if you guys saw my video when we were doing the front end, uh, and I was doing the disc brake conversion, take a look at it. If you go back in the post, and check out my lower ball joint on the passenger side. And I was racing that car at 108. 109 miles an hour and that ball joint was going like this Oof. it turns out all these years I've been checking ball joints the incorrect way all right <clears throat> and I was gonna think of what every uh, dance is I was gonna ask what everybody thinks of cutouts yay or nay um, honestly Dan I think it depends on your application uh, I do have cutouts on the Omega just because it's a lot easier than dropping the headers and the headers just hang in there, I guess, on the emergency brake cable. And uh, on the Omega with the two and a half inch exhaust, if I open the headers, I will gain upwards of half a second at the track versus uh, running it full street trim. And the Nova's got three inch exhaust right through to the back. And with the old 406, I don't know if, if I was, if how tuned it was, I don't really remember. I, I think it still was with the, the first 406. It didn't matter if I had the headers open, um, hanging, or if I was running full exhaust. It didn't seem to make a difference on the car because I guess it's just so free-flowing. However, I can't open the headers now because with the fuel injection, I run an O2 sensor, which is in the exhaust pipe uh, 18 inches or so from the collector. So... There's, uh, and, and the three inch exhaust. I, you know what? I should all, and I've been, I've been only annoying this folks because, uh, the exhaust in the, the Nova has been changed and butchered a, a little over the years as I've made changes, changed mufflers, stuff like that. Of, of moving the exhaust from the Nova, the three inch onto the, uh, Omega because I thought of upgrading the Omega. I didn't get an all nice new exhaust on the Nova again, but the Nova doesn't need exhaust, but. I don't want to put new exhaust on the Omega. But cutouts, it, again, it all depends on, on your application. Because I raced the Omega a lot, it's a lot easier just to open the cutouts than it was to drop the headers every weekend I was out there. And mine are just uh, blocked and, and bolted. I don't have electric cutouts. In fact, they are not legal to run on the street here in Winnipeg. And yeah, slots are sexy wheels. I, I love slots. They're, my girlfriend runs them on her Chevelle. And Patrick's thinking of putting the slots back on. Do it. And yeah, Dan says, yeah, the, uh, the lugs. That's what he was talking about. <clears throat> Dan wants to talk about temperature. Oh, and he, apparently he, you can't run those kind of lugs there at the track. At his, uh, interesting, because they've never said anything to me at our track. I should actually look into that, because, and we have IHRA, so I don't know if you're NHRA or IHRA. Dan wants to talk temperatures, so if you guys uh, want to talk about your cars, uh, by all means, um, you know, fill up the chat. This, uh, this isn't supposed to be all about me. Let's talk about you guys, too. No, I, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind talking, but hey, help me out. Um, Dan, the Nova, like I mentioned earlier, actually both cars are running Superstat 180 thermostats with uh, hole, two little pilot holes drilled. Uh, I don't remember what size I drilled, but they're like, you know, small little, small little holes like that. Two little holes on each side of the, the thermostat. And then uh, on the Nova, I am running, I believe it's two one-inch cores. Man, again, forgetting. i got to really educate myself. Yeah, I'm running two one-inch cores on the uh, Nova. And the Omega is running a standard four-core metal uh, rad, which is actually the old rad from the Nova. The one in the Nova is a Performance World Radiator, and it had to be modified a little to fit. As you can see, my my uh... oh, I can't believe I'm having such a blanket. Yeah, we definitely got to do this more often. 
where the rad cap goes on you can see that it's straight it's not angled like they should be so had i do if i had to do this again i wouldn't have bought this rad because we had to do a little bit of modifications on the bottom because the opening came up like that so it went right into the fan shroud we had to cut it off and weld it straight to get it to work with this i think i'd, I'd spend the money on more of a, a brand name and a rad meant for my car than modifying a rad for it <coughs> And the, the four core that's in the Omega was originally from the Nova, and that was one I had made locally here with some tanks off, uh, an, uh, off an old rad that I took to them. And it, I do not run the transmissions through the rad. I do not run the transmissions through the rad. I was told because, if anything, you will heat up your transmission fluid because your fluid is heating up to whatever temperature your radiator's at. So I do run external transmission coolers. Nothing fancy, just those simple Mr. Transmission medium size coolers. Um, you can't see it in the Nova, but you can see where I cut my uh, my uh, radiator uh, showpiece cover to dam the air to get in. Because without that, I found the transmission was heating up. So I did have to make a relief cut to, to get that air in. It makes a night and day difference. Ah, oh, no. What do you think would be cool fluid for coolant? Uh, I just use uh, pre-stone. And I mix it myself. Here, let me get a jug. Oh, oh don't trip, Dave. Don't, don't trip on live video here. I just use a good old uh, pre-stone. Nothing fancy. All vehicles makes models, years. Uh, concentrate just add water and I mix mine more or less a 60 40 uh, concentrate so that you know uh, they're good for about minus 45 uh, Celsius which is pretty close to Fahrenheit because minus 40 is minus 40 and the reason I do that is should you know something happen where I lose electricity or the heater goes out and the garage freezes in the winter time I don't have to worry about losing an engine block because it's good for minus 40 and carson brown how you doing sir thank you for joining us i'm trying to remember your nova quickly sir i failed you remind me what your nova looks like and dan says the rad looks like the one he has in his car yeah there's nothing wrong with the rad um i guess it's just because my ocd you know the other rad had the slant and I did have to modify the uh, rad cover a little bit for this to fit. But, you know, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's been a great radiator. And with uh, Uncle Fred being a uh, TIG welder, he was able to, you know, saw off that bottom outlet and re-weld it straight as opposed to it being curved and going into fan shroud. Although, yeah, that still would have been a problem with the Flexilite fan shroud. And that Flexilite fan is amazing. Carson, are you running the same fan as I am? But uh, yeah, uh, that Flexilite fan was is, is so nice. The the 188, I believe that there's also the 180. The difference between the two is I think the 180 comes with the temperature control module that you could install to control it turning on and off. Again, I just run mine off ignition. It's on at all times. And uh, mine's the, the 188, and I believe they're 3300 CFM. I'll have to bring the box out here because my spare is in the house because it works so well in the Nova. I, I bought one for the Omega, but I haven't really put too many parts into the Omega. Uh, last year it was in storage all year. Um, I've been thinking of selling it. Uh, yeah, that's. Yeah, next! Ah, and that rad, that's what uh, what I use. <clears throat> and that's right, the, again, that's a, a street uh, 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 performance world radiator. Um, are you referring to the nostrils? You, sir, have noticed one of the only differences between a 73 front bumper and a 74 front bumper. Are the size of the nostrils in the front bumper the 73s are longer the 74s are half the size and some 74s came with the bumperettes on both sides of the license plate 
I do have a 74 bumper out there, but I have it all chained up and I'm not going to try lifting that in here because, well, I could trip. But yeah, that's the, the difference between the 73 and the 74 of the skin of the bumper. Now, the 73 bumpers have the metal brackets. You got the two brackets, one here and one here on angles like that. Those are your 73 brackets. 74 is a whole completely different system like the Omega has. It has uh, two big honking heavy um, holders that hold uh, suspension shocks in them with metal rebar that's in the whole length of the bumper which is about 100 to 120 pounds that bolt to the shock and are like you know suspension but the bumpers also probably come out another half an inch that's why bumper tucking on 74s is, is you, you see more being tucked on 74s and 73s because the bumpers are out even further in 74. i've i've never ever ever given a thought to tucking my bumper it is what it is, even on the Omega. That's how it came. That's how it's going to stay, although it would really line it up for uh, for racing. Regardless, um, the 74 shell will bolt up onto the 73 brackets. And I know that thanks to an accident in 97. I ran this car for a number of years with a 74 front bumper. And, of course, purists, like most of us, will know that. Um it wasn't until 2007, Craig Antonio from uh, Regina, Saskatchewan sold his Nova to fix up his Omega and had a beautiful mint front bumper. And my original front bumper before my accident in 97 was mint. And I, I drove out there with some friends to pick up that bumper. Craig was so kind to sell it to me. Picked it up. Put it on a year later, and I don't think it was five minutes after I put it on the car, and I'm going to do it now. Uh, I broke, just broke down crying, going, my car is a 73 again. Like, it's it's the same bumper, but no, it's not. I, I literally cried because it's like my car is now fully fixed from that accident in 97. And it, it just, it, it, to me, it's always... It's always had to have the, the big the big nostrils. <laughs> Lou's Lou's gonna go uh, check his bumper now. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, Carson, yeah, I have the one eighty. Okay. So Carson, yeah, are are you are you gonna hook up the controls or are you just gonna run yours off the the straight ignition? Um I, I don't know if you need pictures of the installation or not, but to, at the top I, I had two metal brackets that I use that bolt right onto the fan shroud and they bolt right to the radiator cradle and I'm able to hide those under the radiator top and it pulls it nice and flush up against the rad. A couple tie wraps at the bottom. Really, I should I should make holders for the bottom to bolt it in because really it wouldn't take much just to make a couple little plates, just weld them in and yeah, and then I wouldn't need the tie wraps. But the tie wraps have never broken so I never really been an issue okay so uh we'll wait while lou goes uh, and checks his bumper and dan says yeah my bumper takes two people to take off it's a heavy one um <clears throat> i believe uh tim Bourne, when he was building his nova took apart a bumper and weighed it weighed the brackets versus the bracketry and the reinforcement of the 74 bumper and i think it was about 120 pounds difference in the bumper so if you want to lose weight some people say what you do is you just drill out the shocks compress your bumper in then you tack weld the shock or you take the shock out you bolt the two uh, plates together to bring your bumper in but if you really want to save yourself some weight get some brackets off a 73 nova however you will have to drill you will have to drill the end of the frames they are different mounting holes on the end of the frames the end of the front subframes on 74 are just a little different. Uh, okay, where are we here? Uh, Patrick Newman says, if anyone is looking to add an electric fan, try one off an 87 Z28. It's almost a direct bolt-on. Uh, Pat, I would love to see some pictures of that because people are always asking. Uh, you know, we could, we could post the, the same post 
and you know we've got topics and all that but we still get people who come on and I, and I'm not trying to, try to fault anyone because I know I'm guilty of it too. We we don't always use the search feature. We just wanted to ask and, and get answers. And we always got people asking about electric fans in uh, the Nova groups, whether it's this one, the sister group, or our other group. And I love having an answer for them other than, you know, trying to say, flex light, flex light, flex light. Uh, that's one thing I probably should have said at the beginning of the stream. When I talk about the parts I have in my car, by no means am I being sponsored or being directed <clears throat> to talk about these company or their parts. These are parts that I've come across other people using that people have had success with or I have seen on other people's cars and that's why I use them. By no means am I sponsored or looking to be sponsored. I, I look for functionality. I look to see what other people have installed, what they have working for them and that's what I go and I buy. But, uh, Pat, if you do have a fan like that on your Nova or uh, or have a picture, one, I would love to see that. All right. And Dan says, I like the big bumper. I don't like when they tuck them, but not my car, so they do what they want, I guess. Uh, Dan, getting back to, <clears throat> getting back to uh, customization, bumper tucks, and front-end swaps. I, I was, you know, a diehard purist, and so was this group when we first started. Chevy Nova 73, 74, uh, we weren't allowing the front end swappers into, into the group because we wanted 73, 74 Novas, right? And then we got thinking and we're like, what makes your modification different than my modification? Example A, we got clear signal lights, right? I've got a blacked out grill with silver lines. This isn't an SS. I've got LED aftermarket H3. Or is it H4? H4 headlight bulbs. Aftermarket LED lights. What makes my modifications okay, but a front end swap not okay? Now, I had this argument with another gentleman on another forum. And the thing was is, this is a modification where it just modifies the look where a front end swap will change the look. I mean, we can split hairs left and right and talk about this till the car comes home. But like you said, it's your car. You spend the money. Hey, if you want to fix up my car and, and, and give me money, I'll make it look like anything you want. But that, that that's where I guess I came around myself. Uh, that's That's where I kind of accepted it where we, we, we all have the same passion, but what makes my modification okay and not yours? That's, that's, that's where my, my reasoning came to be. And, uh, no, the controls are mounted up. On, oh, no, okay, no, the controls are hooked up, mounted, mount it like you post about it. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm reading that right or it's or autocorrect uh, kicked in there. Or the controls are part of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would make sense. That would be nicer. I thought from, from the pictures I saw on the website, it looked like it was an, a module you kind of hooked up on the side and you wired to it. But if it's part of it, yeah. Well, Lou, uh, if uh, you have a 74 Nova, yeah, you would have the smaller slots. <laughs> I must have the 74 bumper because you have the smaller slots, but... You also said you had a 74 Nova. <laughs> and also the 73s and the 74s. The other difference, of course, <clears throat> are the oh excuse me. <coughs> are the front trunk and front emblems. And I you know, that's one thing I never did on this car. Is when I put the this hood on, I never did put the emblem back on. And I really should because that is such a sexy emblem. I guess I'm afraid of messing up my hood. Because I know when I when I had uh, that accident in, uh, when, I, when I hit that pedestrian in 96, and they found a hood for my car, I guess they found a hood off of 74, and then they drilled an extra hole this way, the wrong way to mount my hood emblem on. And ever since that happened, I've always 
And I got this hood. It's like, yeah, no, not doing it. Maybe I should. I have one on my 72. I'll check and see if I have a good picture. I'd appreciate that, Pat. Uh, no rush. Whenever, buddy. Whenever. It's not like I'm going to rush right on and get one. And, and really, I don't. I can't remember ever seeing a newer Camaro in a junkyard. All right, let's see where we're at here. Jason, how you doing, buddy? Uh, what's up, buddy? How are you? I uh, hope you're doing okay. Ah, I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm saving money. Uh, the oil leak in the uh, Nova stopped. More or less, uh, like you said, I hope you're doing better. Uh, because of uh, my accelerator brake uh, mechanism. Yeah. But I, I have noticed with the Nova sitting here, there's a huge puddle of transmission fluid under it. So uh, I got to address that. And while I got the fluid out, I also got to change the uh, transmission tail end housing. Let's, let's take this out of the bag here. Because I want to install this drive shaft loop. Um, we talked about this when I first ordered this back last winter fall whatever this is supposed to go on the trans mount but i guess the the housing i have on the back of my turbo 350 is a turbo 400 housing because it uses the big speedo gear it has the big speedo gear housing which has which comes down and around with a big lump and with that big lump it won't clear the housing so i had to get another housing which I'm going to put on eventually so I can put on a drive shaft loop. Uh, not proud of it, but yeah, I've been racing the Nova all this time without a drive shaft loop because I refuse to drill holes in my floor. So yeah, we got this to do as well. And so I guess while I drain all the fluid out of it to, to redo the pan gasket, we'll, uh, we'll change this housing as well. And I guess now that i got different tires, i got to figure out the speedo gears to use and... I should be doing that now while I'm uh, not driving. Okay. Well, that's where we are there. And yeah, this, uh, I'm looking forward to using I, I actually think it was Patrick Newman who told me this may not fit. You might have to modify it a little. I can't remember, Pat, if uh, I'm speaking uh, out and it wasn't you. Please correct me because I don't want to start rumors. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to because I, want, I wanted to build something like this that would bolt up to the tranny cross member or do something like that. And this is supposed to go in place of the mount where that plate that plate that comes with that polyurethane mount that goes in place of that mount. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to using this. This is a, a, a drive shaft loop. Uh, what was the brand of this again? I have a picture. If anybody wants to know more about this drive shaft loop, Post uh, in the comments of the stream or in the, in the comment of the post of the stream or send me a, a personal message and uh, I'll get you the part number and where I bought it. I, I want to say it was Bueller Performance or Butler Performance. But I'll get you the correct info if you so desire. But I'm doing better, Jason. Uh, I hope things, of course, uh, everything is well with you. <clears throat> Okay, Dan, people may hate me after I say this, but I'm thinking of selling my Nova to buy a 77 Ford truck 4x4. Um, I will say this, if, if you were buying a truck, those late 74 trucks, those are a sexy truck. Like a, I'm not a Ford guy, but... Okay, maybe I am a Ford guy, but I mean, I'm in the closet. Um, those are a sexy truck, but you know, sometimes you got to make sacrifices for what you want. Just keep keep in mind, though, Dan, uh, those Novas are getting more expensive and harder to find. But you got to do what you got to do, buddy. And if you did sell the uh, the the Nova, um, you're still welcome in the group. Still, you just don't you dare post that for a truck. There we go. Okay. Do you still have column shift? And how hard is it to put that Lacar linkage on? Yes, the Nova is still column shift, and I'm very proud to say it is because there's people out there that are like, you run a 12-second car, you, you don't have a shifter. And that, that, there, one sec, let me get some, I actually think I have one in the garage here. Let me, let me, ah, ah, oh, I, yep, there it is. Okay. Whoa, don't trip. 
This thing, in all honesty, uh, Adam, installs in about 10 minutes. Uh, you got your rod, your, your two uh, uh, hind joints, and then you get this uh, the shifter uh, lever, which you, you put on the transmission. And it, it's just a matter of finding your sweet spot to get all the gears. And then um, you can adjust the length of the rod you need. Where, where is that? And then, yeah, you just cut to adjust. What I did when I when I first put mine on the Nova is before I, I made the, the rod the right length, I actually bought a second piece of rod from a hardware store. And I, I fitted that one so I knew where to cut my good rod. I still haven't done that. It's still the original prototype rod. As are my clear signal lights. Those were the prototype ones where I bought brand new lenses to make very nice, clear, and a nice new looking one. So, yeah, this this car is just full of prototypes. But this is it here for the Turbo 350, Turbo 400, or 700 R4. The Le Car ACA 1800. And uh, I bought this second one because I was, I was going to try and hook it up on the transmission on the Omega so that my gear indicator on the column would still work with the floor shifter. Well, you can see how far I got on that one, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yes, I should talk about this. Are you tired of getting into your car late at night with only a dome light, having trouble finding your keys because you dropped them on the mat and you can't see the floor? Things aren't that bright. And you're using your cell phone for light and your battery dies and now you're screwed. Painless Wire Kit has a courtesy light kit. Part number 30702. And I bought this just recently. Uh, I needed to order another $24 from Summit for free shipping. <laughs> so I bought these. These are the under dash lights for our cars that will wire right in to the door switch. So this too is on my uh, to-do list. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to put it in the Nova first or the Omega. Usually I always do things on the Omega first. As the prototype, let's be honest, if I do it on the Omega, I'm going to forget about it for the Nova. So we're just going to put them straight in the Nova. So now when I drop my keys on the carpet, I'll be able to see. And yeah, this was only like, it was around $30, I believe. I think it was also Lou. Lou, I believe you were the one who put me onto the, uh, the path of, of buying this. So that's, that's, that's today's uh, show and tell. But yes, the, the car, car uh, linkage installed in minutes. Like I think I had it done in 10 minutes. And Jason, I'm still interested in doing a, a walk around my car. I believe you are on our list. We've been crazy busy at work. We did uh, a run, a streetcar takeover. ran a 9.06 on 100 with less nitrous and the heads and intake reported. Wow, that is fast. James Klein, good day, sir. Did you just pop in or did you, uh, I didn't see you, uh, see you say hello or pop in. Hey, good day, sir. James actually does have one of uh, his car featured in one of our Zoom videos. If you haven't seen it, check out the Chevy Nova 7374 YouTube page. That's right, we have our own YouTube page. Now that's where I usually put these streams. Although you can't follow oh, yeah, on this side, you can't follow the chat. Well, I don't know what side the chat's on. You can't follow the chat when you watch it on the YouTube. But if you do rewatch it on the Facebook page, you can actually reply to the chat. And I do try to reply to these chats as people rewatch this later on. And James is saying, no, that's a, a BOP, a Buick Olds Pontiac, uh, tail housing that's on my car now. And you know what, James? That would make sense because I had a dual bolt pattern housing before I uh, before I broke it. That would make sense. Look at that. I learned something today. Thank you, James. And I still haven't bought a steering box yet for the Nova. I still got to do that. But, sir, welcome. This is beautiful lime green. I forget the official name of it, but lime green 73 Nova. Beautiful. Uh, take a look at the 
Um, select their shift seal as they sit for a while. The converter drains down and the fluid lever goes out the selector shaft. Actually, Pat, I did look under briefly and it's coming at the corner of the pan because I remember when I was under there before, I could see it sweating and the odd drip. And that's where I'm pretty sure it's coming. But you are right. I have seen that and I've also seen it come out the speedo gear. But you know what? While I'm under there, I might as well check that as well. But this transmission was just rebuilt 400 miles ago. So I hope to God it's not the, uh, the selector shaft seal. Oh, oh, that would make me cranky. Then I would swear, and then this video would be taken down. I have had the Nova for 26 years, Dan says. Well, Dan, if you've had it that long, why get rid of it? But I guess, you know, some people get tired, and they want new things. They want different things. Uh, you got to do what's right for you, bro. Uh, how bad do you want a truck? How bad do you like the Nova? You got to do what's right for you, and, you know, I've had mine over for 26 years, and until this past spring, uh, I've never thought of selling it or ever getting rid of it, but my reasons for selling it were because of relationship issues. But uh, in all honesty, let's be honest, I'm never going to sell it. The Omega, I've been thinking about it, but will I probably sell it? Because what are you going to buy for what are you going to get today? Like, I, I've been looking for... <laughs> a 68 to 72 Nova. I'd like to find another 70 SS. Uh, I found my dad's original Nova, which was the 70 SS, but it's in a barn and, oh, I'm going to fix it up one day. And uh, I, I haven't talked to the guy in almost 10 years, so I don't know if he's fixed it up or if it's still in his barn, but I think that's the only time I'd get rid of the Omega is if uh, I picked up another Nova or if I picked up a 74. I, I would like to find... Uh, another 73 or 74 hatchback because I've never had a hatchback one and the current cost of Nova's is pretty mind-blowing oh Lou you aren't kidding um, I've looked online because when I thought of selling my Omega I was thinking of selling it for 8500 Canadian uh, as it is turnkey 13 second car and my buddy says you're nuts uh, um, Ask minimum 10. I mean, the Omega's rough. Like, it's got holes in the front fender still because I haven't found new fenders. I never did finish the body work on the side after welding it. And, yeah, it's got its patina. And I've painted it with seven cans of trim clod. And I started looking online. And there's people selling rusted out shells with a box full of parts for, like, six grand U.S. And my buddy who has a 72 Nova, and we were ooming and aahing about, you know, making him an offer on it. And uh, he mentioned something about you, you can't even get anything decent for 20 grand uh, Canadian in some of the areas up here. And he's right. So if I sold the Omega, I'm going to be out. And I don't need to sell it. It's more just I need room. I mean, I got the, the Mustang too. I don't want to sell the Mustang, but Dave, something's got to go. Hey, Lou's got to call him shift as well right on. I just think I just think it, it looks awesome when with the call and the Lacar that that was one reason why I went with the Lacar shifter is I had so much slop in the factory linkage and at the time you couldn't buy factory linkage replacement stuff that's why I went with the Lacar shifter and it's just a nice beautiful clean shift love painless they are here local to me well that's awesome hmm I missed it, Dave. What did I make you buy? Uh, we were talking about the uh, courtesy light kit from Painless. Uh, I was mentioning that uh, I needed an extra like thirty dollars or something to get free shipping in Summit, and I remember I remember somebody talking about this. I I thought it was you, and I, I went and I bought the courtesy light kit because I'm I'm going to install it in the Nova one day. Holy crap, we've been online for well over an hour. Like, oh, it's getting close to an hour and a half. Right on, guys. Yeah, hey, as long as you guys want to talk, sure. I'm game. And Dan would love to buy a 68 Nova, but they are way, way out of his price range. Oh, yes, sir, they are. And even, like, even junk is going for, like, crazy numbers. And then, then you read the horror stories of what some people will buy for crazy money. 
a couple of years later, some Bondo cracks, and then they found out they bought a bondoed up rust bucket, and you paid top dollar. Yeah, that that would that would set me over the edge. But really, um, if I sold the Omega for even if I sold it for ten grand Canadian, which is what eight grand US, I, I think I'd be giving it away. But I mean, the Omega's got a lot of a lot of rust underneath, a lot of a lot of some issues that you know I fixed that I may not have done properly, but we didn't know when we were doing the car. If you really want to see the whole story about the Omega, oldsomega.ca forward slash slowmega. Go to the two thousand six section and look at the pictures there's pictures of the work we did to get the car on the road it, it went through quite a journey it went through quite a journey and dan says oh his is a 74 hatchback wink wink you know in uh all the years i've had uh 73 74 novas and i think i've had a few for parts cars or another one i was going to fix up at one time yeah, and all my parts cars, they, they have all been trump cars. I've never had a hatchback. And the one hatchback that came on time uh, uh, in our group, actually, Larry Barr uh, posts a picture. He's got that li license plate that says Custom, that brown Nova. He is from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, he When I saw that ad up on Kijiji, um, that car was ridiculously priced low, and I looked at it, and uh, Larry beat me by 20 minutes for that car. And Larry's still driving today. In fact, I, I saw him yesterday. So, Larry, if you're watching this, how you doing, buddy? Um, uh, I would have loved to have had that car. That would have been a cool car. Huh? I don't recall the courtesy light. Okay, so maybe it wasn't. Lou. Well, I remember somebody talking about courtesy lights. <laughs> so, yeah, if you, if you joined us late... The cat's out of the bag. Uh, I'm driving. Uh, this is a 421 Stroker small block Chevy. And I'm looking really forward to to running at the track after I properly break it in. Uh, one thing I am worried about is uh, it hooking. I don't know if it's going to hook. I don't know if it's going to send the rear end out because it is still a stock rear end with a stock carrier and stock axles. I don't know what to expect. If it hooks, great. If it doesn't, but I think this winter, depending on how things go, how money goes, I, I was thinking of doing the uh, multi, uh, the single mo mono leaf, uh, split mono leaf with Caltrax, and we'll see if the rear end holds or if I have to upgrade the carrier and the axles. But I wanted to see if the car would hook first before I spend that kind of money. So there you go. The cat's out of the bag. So we're looking to run past 12 twos and whatever it runs, it runs. I'm not going to do any more tweaking on the sniper, whatever it decides it wants, it's going to get, I can't afford to blow up any more motors, man. People are going, getting crazy money for the hatch on hatchback cars. If you could ever find one, you are absolutely right down the hatches, even, you know, not rotted ones, but even rusted ones are going for 800 to a grand and that's us. And, you know, people see some of that stuff, and then up in Canada, they double the price of, it'll be like 1500 And uh, I recently helped out a guy by giving him some deal and some parts to fix up his 73 Nova. And he since said, I put him in touch with another guy to buy a couple parts cars. And I see now he is now selling parts. And not quite at the same deal that I, I was giving him, and that, that really... Kind of hurts, kind of upsetting, but I mean, it is what it is, right? And, uh, yeah, those hatches are, are not going cheap. Even the window trim people want two, three hundred bucks for, and it's like, wow. And to come to think of it, I don't even remember seeing a hatch in the junkyard. Eh. Yeah, it is what it is. And speaking of it is what it is, uh, I guess let's uh, let's do uh, some closeout comments. Or if you want to keep chatting, uh, give me something to, to yap about. And we'll do, uh, if you guys want to do a final round, or if you guys want to speak to each other too, by all means, send each other personal messages or uh, just hit replies here. And uh, if not, uh, we'll close out in about three minutes. That'll give us the 90-minute show. So the Nova Hour was a Nova Hour and a half. 
And Dan says, I would make more if I parted out my car than selling the car whole. And you, sir, are not lying. Um, I've often said to my friends, and if I was ever in a car accident where I was taken away, tow my car home. Do not let the insurance tow it away to the compound. One, because the process of putting a car back on the road here, the insurance have made it so bad. Now they'll give you a salvage title or they'll just write the car off and they won't even work with you to save your car. But definitely you will make a killing, a killing parting out a car. Especially when you got sweet mint black interior. But I would put that in the Omega. And if when the borders ever open, you need I need to come race you, Dave. <laughs> Um, sure, pick a time, pick a car. <laughs> no, I shouldn't be cocky like that because karma comes back. Um, <clears throat> the borders are actually supposed to open up in Canada by the end of August for fully vaccinated Americans. And we're not going to get into any vaccination talks or beliefs. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I would say the Omega is, is ready to go. Uh, Lou, if, if you want to run, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's a safe mid 13 second car. I would say guaranteed it's going to run a 13.5 to 13.6 on a, a drag radial with the cutouts open. Um, the Nova, I'm not quite confident in it yet. I haven't even given it full throttle because it just incinerates the tires. I want to put the drag radials on it, go to my uh, little burnout spot and do a couple little pulls on it, see how it's going to act, make some idle videos for you guys. And maybe now that I've told you what it is, maybe I'll post some pictures of it. That, that's another reason, too, I've been pretty quiet on the group. Is uh, I just didn't want to say anything. Teehee. Oh, I'm glad I made this chat. I've enjoyed this. You know what, Dan? I'm glad you made it, too, because uh, I enjoy talking Noah's. I enjoy rambling, as you can tell. Um. And you know what? I've even had some of the members who were on this chat earlier uh, who uh, per personal messaged me. I got no problem with that. I'll, I'll message you back. You know, I may not message you back instantly, but I do try to get back to people within reasonable time within a day. If it's early in the morning, I'll try to get back to you earlier in the day, of course. But, you know, I don't, I don't live on my phone. When I'm with my friends, it's put away and I give my full attention to what's at hand. Yeah, yeah. Lou says his best is 13.8 so far. So it would be Epic versus the Omega. Lou, if I'm remembering correctly, I, you're building a 383, but right now you have a 355 with Bortec heads. And I don't remember. I think you have 373 gears. Not that I've been stalking you or anything like that. But that would probably be a pretty even race with the Omega. The Omega, if you leave it in drive, will run a 14.1, 14.2. As the, the transmission, the governor in the, the Omega is set up uh, to shift at 4,200 and 4,600. So you're not even fully out of your power band yet. And it's already shifting. Which is probably why that motor runs so well and lasted so long. Is it doesn't run near its, uh, its ragged edge. Where the governor in the, in the, the Nova. Um, and I got this governor from Dan because he set it up for his car. This car shifts at 55 and 55, and I do have the spring combo written down if anybody's interested in uh, setting up their governor that way. And I do run full full valve bodies. There's no manual valve bodies, none of that shifting. No, I, it just it does its own thing. And the, I do have shift kits, of course, so you know you can shift it manually. But um, th these are just power like built turbo 350 transmissions with high quality parts and nothing uh, nothing fancy about it and dan says he took facebook off his phone um in all honesty dan chevy nova 7374 and the gmx body group and our other cousin group are the only reasons i'm really on facebook not and i guess the car group like i i've, I've got some of you guys are friends uh, offline that I've met over the years and I don't want to lose touch with you guys, but that's probably the main reason I haven't turned off Facebook is because of the Nova groups. 
and Lou 355 with AFR heads and stock gears. Okay, so we are pretty even, although I have Vortec heads, but your AF heads, yours will probably breathe a bit better, but I think the gearing and the tires, just a little adjustment there, Lou, and we will be side by side. If not, I will have a good view of your driver's fender or driver's door. And Les, hey, how are you doing? Les uh, Sesbatini from Alberta, Canada. Uh, the father of my good friend Logan, who uh, passed away a few years ago, is putting back together Logan's car. And uh, Les and I chat often. Uh, Logan was a contributing member of this group till about uh, three, two and a half, three years ago. Uh, until he got ill and uh, has left us. Uh, Logan was a contributing member of our group here and was very active in the 73-74 uh, Nova groups. Um, was taken apart rebuilding his car when he got ill. And I've been trying to help Les and steer him in ways to get Logan's Nova put back together. And of course with Canada being shut down, uh, I haven't been able to go out there to, to help. But yeah, uh, if I could still uh, get some time, I uh, might be able to make it out there still. I would still, I'd love to come see that car and, uh, and come see uh, Logan's life for sure, man. Yeah, that would, that would still be cool. And thanks for joining us, Les. Uh, I don't know if I missed you earlier or not, but uh, welcome. Hope everything's going well with you guys. Uh, Lou, uh, yeah, me too. I love the Facebook group. Otherwise, I wouldn't have Facebook either. And I know... Um, we had uh, Kim started uh, a MeWe 7374 group. Um, I never did join the other. Like, if Facebook dies, uh, that's it for me. I'm not going to do the social media thing. Uh, I am on Instagram under my Nova Boy 73, but I just post pictures of the cars. But uh, I, I, will, I would love to still be part of the, the Chevy Nova 7374 community for as long as it exists, for sure. And Dan says he has 342 gears in his car. Uh, yeah, I have 342s in the Nova, Dan, and 373s in the Omega. The rear end in the Nova is just a stock 8.5 with stock axles, stock carrier. But I did do a gear swap back in, was it, 2001 to 342s. And the reason I only went to 342s is ultimately when I built this first 406, um... I would go through the traps at about 5,300 and I still like to do some highway driving and I'll drive this car to and from the track without even blinking. Same with the Omega. Although I will slow down a little bit with the 373s uh, just to keep the RPMs around three grand and I'm doing about 90, 95, hundred kilometers and the Omega stock axles, but it has the Detroit true track posi uh, carrier in it. I think actually if I sold the Omega I would I'd swap carriers <laughs> all right well Dan good night uh, time for him to get out of here and get some sleep this was fun be safe have a good night of course Dan uh, well wishes to you and uh, good health of course uh, be safe as well and uh, I hope to see you again in another chat I'm gonna aim <sighs> what's today the 19th J July 19th uh, August 2nd, well, that's going to be a long weekend. I'm going to eyeball something, let's say, folks, for August 3rd, August 4th. Leaning probably more onto the 4th. But don't quote me on that. Of course, there'll be a post about it before I do it. Because, yeah, th this is fun. we got to do this more often. Uh, I'm just talking about cars. As you can tell, I've drawn so many blanks today, and I apologize for not having proper answers for you guys. But yeah, this is definitely a lot of fun. And I guess in saying that, we are almost at the 100-minute mark. So uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time in joining me today uh, in, in the stream and joining me in my garage, listening to me, entertaining me uh, by listening. Uh, as my, my buddy Dan says in his stream, uh, another Dan, who he DJs, uh, the greatest gift you can give to me is your time because that's something you can never take back. So that's pretty cool. 
And uh, Lou says uh, he would like to host the Zoom maybe in September. So maybe coming closer to winter, we may bring the Zoom meetings back. And yeah, that would be cool to have a big Zoom members meeting and or do a feature on a, another member's car again. So uh, yeah, good night, Pat. Thanks uh, again for joining us. Um, thank you guys again for, for joining me tonight uh, from Win Winnipeg, Manitoba, where I'm from. Again, the 73 Chevy Nova and her, or her, his, whatever, uh, the car doesn't have a gender. Corporate cousin, the 74 Old Omega. Isn't it nice to get rid of the Ford? <laughs> I got to admit, I like having my ex bodies back. So, yeah. So, everybody, take care. Uh, be good to one another. Please feel free to, to post what you want on the forum. Flood them with pictures. I love your pictures. I'm living through your pictures right now, especially not being able to cruise, although I have gone out a few times lately. I, I love your Novas, uh, except for the blue ones. Please post them. And uh, take care of yourselves. Don't be afraid to post questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question, because I bet you anything, there's two or three other people thinking the same thing. And for those of you who may be watching afterwards or lurking in the background, um, thank you for joining and watching, and please, uh, I hope to hear from you soon or see you post in the group. Uh, as you can see, we've got a great group of friendly people. Nobody's going to bite your head off, and anybody that is disrespectful or does bite your head off, I will simply delete. Take care, everybody. Smoke tires, not drugs, or whatever the line I use is, and uh, yeah, first week August, uh, we'll be back online. Take care, everybody. Good night.